we have a piecewise function f of x and um, a negative parabola g of x. And we're asked to prove that there's a value of k with k is a positive constant such that the graph of f touches the graph of g. Now, does it touch this side or this side? That's one question to think about. Do we need to check both solutions? Um, and you can kind of dive straight into it. But if you realize one little thing, which actually I got to be honest, I didn't when I first did this question, then it can save, it can just like speed things up slightly. And that is actually the fact that both functions are symmetric about the y axis. If I sketch g of x, it's a negative parabola. It goes through 2.5 squared here. Now, f of x is more difficult to deal with, but um, consider some x greater than 0. Let y equal minus x. Then f of y, because um, I've got some positive 1 here, I'm now going to consider this one. It's going to be minus k minus x to minus x. All I've done is um, is basically taken this and replaced x by minus x. I could even write f of minus x. That might have been... Do I even need to introduce y? I don't know. So then I'm going to be left with kx, because there's a double negative, 2 minus x. So actually, it equals f of x. That's what we've just shown. And the conclusion is also symmetric about x equals 0. So if we're showing that they're going to touch, actually gonna, they're going to touch both sides. Like just they just will um, because they're both symmetric about x equals zero. So we only need to look at one side, and it makes sense to look at the well. Actually, well, I look at the positive side. Um, so so consider f of x equals g of x for x greater than 0, then we're going to get k x 2 minus x equals 2.5 squared minus x squared. Now, we're like I've set them equal to one another, but there's plenty we can do with that actually. You know, we, if you're interested in where they didn't touch, or whether they intersected, or whether they just touched, there's something you can do, and that is these. This is a this is a quadratic equation. Um, it doesn't necessarily look like it, but that's the highest power of x, and so we can use the discriminant. So, if they just touch, then the discriminant, this thing here, is equal to zero. Um, so first things first, let's try and get it into the right form so that we can use the discriminant. Now there's another little trick which I got me I didn't pick up when I did this question first of all. I cut when I did it. I continue to work in decimals and I use the quadratic formula with the discriminant, which did work okay, but we can make it a little bit easier because 2.5 is actually just 5 over 2, and therefore 2.5 squared is equal to 25 over 4. We can work in nice whole numbers. So it's going to become 2kx minus kx squared equals 25 over 4 minus x squared. And that means k 
k minus 1 x squared, I've basically added this term and then I factorized out the x squared minus 2kx plus 25 over 4 equals 0. Um, and the discriminant, so therefore, so yeah, we've got this quadratic equation um, and we're trying to find the value of k where they just touch, so we need to set the discriminant equal to 0. So the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. These are our coefficients in the quadratic equation. So it's going to become 4k squared when I square the minus 2k. That's my, that is my b, that is my a, and that is my c, remember. So b squared minus 4 k minus 1, 25 over 4 is equal to 0. When they just touch. So I've avoided decimals through this method. Like I said, it, it will work out if you don't if you don't spot to do this. Next thing, multiply through by that 4. We're dividing by 4, so multiply through 16k squared minus, and then do 25 times 4. That's going to be 100. Okay, so I've done a couple of steps in one there. So 16k squared minus 100k plus 100 equals 0. There's a Actually, there's a common factor of four. Um, I should have just I should have just got rid of that. Didn't spot to do that. So those two would have just cancelled. Or equivalently, I need to divide through by four now. Sorry. Four k squared minus twenty five k plus twenty five equals zero. Okay, I would expect this to factorize. Um, it's not going to be 2 and 2, is it? I think it's going to be 4 and 1. And then this is, yeah, this will work. So I need a 5 there, a 5 there, a minus and a minus. So that'll give me plus 25. I'll get minus 20k, minus 5k. I'll get my minus 25k. So k is equal to 5 over 4 or 5. Um, so there is a value of k where they touch. We just need to be careful. Okay? It's a bit suspicious. It says there is a value. It doesn't say values. So we just need to check that the values of k, um, where they touch, were within this domain. So I'm going to go with 5 to start with. Consider k equals 5. Um, I can take that original. Where has it gone? I can set them equal to one another. Ah, uh, here. Um, so before I took the discriminant, So if I put k, let me just grab this equation. Curves touch when for I'm just substituting in k equals 5, 4 x squared minus 10 x plus 25 over 4 equals 0. Uh, 
um, let's see if this factorizes for, oh wait, remember, because it's, um, there'll be a repeated root, of course, because I've just drawn it as equal to zero. So minus five. Okay, so x equals five over four. Uh, this is within the range. Now let's look at the other one. You can bet that this one won't be in the range. So I'm just substituting in 1.25, or like 5 over 4, so I'm going to get a quarter x squared minus, and it's 2 times 5 over 4, so that's going to be 5 over 2 plus 25 over 4. Time 3 by 4. Okay, it's important to rule that out, therefore, curves touch only, curves touch when k equals 5. Now, could be on SAS, my answer. I did just have a little glance at the mark scheme and it did it slightly nicer. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you about that. Because remember, um, in the quadratic formula, if the discriminant is equal to zero, then you're going to get minus b plus or minus the discriminant, but that's just zero. You're actually simply going to get that as your x value. And we actually have that value of b because it's, uh, it's this thing here, it's minus 2k. So it's going to become 2k, and then a was k minus 1. And so you can see this is uh, actually only going to be okay when k is equal to 5. When you substitute in 1.25, it's going to be bigger than it's going to be outside the domain. So could have used this is all I'm trying to say. Would have been a lot quicker. If we spotted that, then well done. Let's look now at part B. So for this value of k, k equals 5, sketch the graphs of the functions f and g on the same axes, stating clearly where they touch. Well, We've actually found out where they touch, um, or at least we found the x value, which was uh, 5 over 4. So we're well on our way to being able to do this. Okay, so that is the function, the, one of the functions. Just a reminder, so it's going to be minus 5x. 2 plus x. And then 5x to minus x. Um, probably worth just thinking about what each of these look like in their respective um, you know, regions. So here we've got this well, still the top one first. So we would have roots at 0 and minus 2. 
um, so we know it's going to go through the axis there, and here we're going to, it's going to go through at 0 and 2. Okay, that might be enough, so let's get a I think it's best to draw f of x first. So when x is equal to 0, the function is equal to 0. We know it's symmetric. If we go in the positive direction, then we know it goes through 2. Uh, let's move that here. And then here. Um, so they are both negative parabolas, and therefore it's going to look like that, and that, because it would, I know the roots, look, I know it's a negative parabola, so it's going to look like uh, a bit like this. I know where the roots are, I just don't, I just don't carry it on, um, because I'm the it only exists between 0 and 2 or 0 and minus 2. So that is going to be f of x. And then I know the other one goes through the axis at 2.5 squared. Um, just need to take a little look at this. So what it was uh, 2.5 squared minus x squared. Actually, that is the difference of two squares. So we could factorize it as 2.5 minus x, 2.5 plus x because the roots are at 2.5. Um, we're not actually going to sketch it. What does it want us to sketch it between? Let's just check. OK, it doesn't actually say to what to sketch it between, so I think I'll include 2.5. And then I know it touches at 1.25, so it's going to be about here, and minus 1.25. Yeah, I'm going to need to move that 2.5 squared down. Try that again. Okay, that's not bad. And then actually that would carry on and there's nothing stopping me showing that. So that is our sketch. The only thing I've not done is it asked me to label the point at where it touches. Um, so that's going to be my x coordinate. And I just uh, need to work out g of x, or sorry, f of x or g of x when x is 5 over 4. So I've got to decide which one to put it in. I, I might just put it in g of x just because it, it looks slightly simpler, if I'm honest. So when x equals 5 over 4, g of x will equal... Remember, this is 25, uh, it was 5 over 2, or 25 over 4, minus x squared, that's going to be 25 over 16. It's going to be 100 over 16. 
minus 25 over 16, which is 75 over 16. So not too bad. And this one will be minus 25 over 16 because of the symmetry. So there we have it. Using our value of k, we've got these sketch, sketches drawn. Finally, we are asked to uh, calculate the region, the area of the region bounded by these two curves. It's going to be this bit here that I'm shading in purple. How can we calculate that area? Well, what we can do, if I draw a line going vertically down, is I can integrate underneath uh, this first red curve, which will give me the entire area, and then subtract the definite integral of the blue area because I'll just be left with these little bits, and that will leave me the purple area. So the area will equal the integral. And remember, this is minus 5 over 4. And this is 5 over 4. So I'm just going to start with this. Um, what was it again? It was it was five over two, so twenty five over four. I'm going to keep working in, in fractions. And then the other one. Um, Oh, it's more awkward because because it sort of changes. So I'm just going to have to write f of x. Now we could split the integral up um, and just look at the negative, like the negative x and the positive x. But actually, there's a little trick we can do, um, and that is to use again the fact that there is symmetry. It's symmetric about x equals zero, so I can just calculate the positive the area on the positive uh, side, and then I can double it, which will give us a much easier um, integral to calculate. This is something worth knowing in general. When you have functions that are symmetric about x equals zero, um, and you are doing like an integral across a region like this, you can just look from zero to the right hand edge and then double it rather than using the negative and the positive. It tends to be a little bit simpler. So now I'm just going to look at this. Uh, this bit, no, sorry, the second bit, 5x and 2 minus x. Okay, now this is actually 10x minus 5x squared. Sorry, that should have been doubled as well. And another thing you can do when you're adding and subtracting in like two integrals like this is actually you can bring it all under one integral. It's like when you integrate, you know, if you integrate x squared plus x cubed, you kind of integrate this one separately and this one separately. So you can either kind of do it under one like big bracket, or you could write it like this. Okay, I'm not going to prove that, but that is that is allowed. And therefore, we can do the opposite. We can go back from this right-hand side to the left-hand side. So they're both doubled, so I can just leave the two on the outside. And then this is going to be um, minus 10x plus 5x squared. Technically, I need a bracket here. So I've got a double negative on the minus 5x, so it becomes plus. Okay, let's keep going. So 
so it's going to become 4 x squared minus 10x plus 25 over 4. We're ready to integrate it. Yeah, I'm just bringing the power, I'm increasing the power and then dividing by it as you normally do. And this is great, as you can see, because when you put zero in, you don't get any terms. So we only have to worry about this five over four. Okay, five cubed is 125. 4 cubed is 64. So we can um we can actually cancel this 4 with this 64 and get 16. Um, so there's going to be a, just trying to see, there's no other way, there's a 3 here. Oh, that was going to have to uh, roll with the rest of it. So. going to be 125 over 16 times 3 which is 48 minus actually I'm just going to put I'm not going to rush it 125 over 16 plus 125 over 16 okay that's good news I didn't actually realize that so these are going to cancel and we're just going to be left with uh, the 2 and the 48 are going to partially cancel to leave me 125 over 24. Um, it feels like that is a fine answer. We could write that as a mixed number. 5 times 24 is 120. So you could alternatively write it as 5. And the remainder is going to be 4. So 4 times... Uh, sorry, 5 over 24. Okay, uh, for me, a challenging question because, you know, you only have to slip up at the first bit and it's going to be, you can't use the value of k for all the other bits. So I hope you're happy about that. Well done.